We are on the brand new Bahama Boatworks 41 GT. We're gonna take it through the paces, have a beautiful day out here in Riviera Beach and bring you guys along for the ride. Let's go. As we let this cloud go by, which will allow us to get better photography, I wanted to just explain what we're doing. We're here in Munion Island in Riviera Beach right now, which is a spot we've come to a couple times. There's a beach that we can get that water level footage, which looks real nice. And then we can fly the drone from here too. Also beach it, we'll get some B-roll. So it's a great spot to do our thing. And right behind me again, we have the 41 GT. This is like the revitalized version of the 41 that we've loved for so long. They actually did the dual row seating. They added a lot of features in here, which is, I guess they're more family oriented. So the boat's always been a high quality, you know, fishing machine. Now it's a little bit of everything. You can fish this thing with all the comfort in the world, all the space that you need, but you're also now going to have more seating and more amenities for your family, which is absolutely fantastic. I love to see how they did it or that they did it and how they did it. They did a great job and we're going to jump on board and take a look at every piece of this thing for you all at home. All right, so now that we got some of our B-roll, some of the photography, got the drone up in the air, we ran the boat a little bit and the V10 400s provide tremendous power for this boat. It's the perfect package in my opinion. The 68 miles an hour, which is plenty fast for this thing, it's really fast for this thing. And the low end torque is just out of control. We're gonna pull into Sailfish Marina right now to grab some lunch. And then after that, we're gonna go through our walkthrough and get into every single detail we possibly can for you. Pulling out of Sailfish Marina, this is a very popular space up here in uh, Riviera Beach. There's a lot of fishing tournaments here. If you can see, there's a ton of sport fish around. You know, very popular destination. The food, you know, really good inside there. So now we're back out and this is basically what you'd be enjoying owning a boat like this. Being able to go out with friends and family, stopping at local, you know, eateries, sandbars, going offshore fishing, running the Bahamas. You can basically do it all here and you're gonna do it comfortably. So I wanted to show you the port side door and a cool ladder system that they created here at Bahama. Go ahead and open here. If Jeff, you can show us how that this works. It's got a skeleton key. It's indexes into this hub that we've had built. Stops it from coming any further into the boat. When you're ready to deploy it, you're gonna simply lower it down. And it's got an Armstrong three-step ladder attaches to it. Yeah. You don't have to worry about hitting the boat. Inside or outside. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to attach it in the whole thing, but you put that pin in there, deploy it down. And again, they planned it perfectly so it's not hitting the boat on the way up. So when you lift this piece up. You have a built-in handle right here to help yourself get out of the water. Oh, yeah. True. Very nice. And this is a serious stainless steel piece. Gives you enough distance so you don't hit this beautiful hinge right here. And then and it clears when the you boat clear that. on the inside. Right. It stays in place right there. So... Very nice, great idea by Bahama. All right, so we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty here, what you guys have been waiting for. I have Jeff that's gonna take us through the boat here to start. We have quad V10 400s. How do you think this combination is set up with those? I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Crazy, huh? With, with the electric steering, all, no pumps in the boat, no hydraulics, all fly by wire. Makes the joystick installation awesome and it works flawlessly. Yeah, again, we, I think we mentioned it earlier, you do 68 miles an hour with yep. this setup. I mean, crazy low end torque. The boat jumps up on plane like if there's nothing here. And this is, you know, a Husky 41 footer. This is yeah, a light yeah, boat right here. It ain't a light boat. It's probably 22,000 pounds. Oh my goodness. So incredibly <laughs> impressive. Unbelievable outboard by Mercury Marine and the perfect, you know, setup on, on this boat. Perfect steering package. And they're very low amper on the steering as well. Cool. Another thing you guys do awesome that I love on every single one of these boats is this backrest. You know, to be able, what's the beam on this thing? It's 11 foot. 11 foot beam and you have, you know, pretty much 10 and a half feet of backrest. <laughs> and then all these cushions that you can get up and out of the way when you're going to do some serious fishing. But, you know, you're running to the Bahamas or something. This is the most comfortable spot on the entire boat. You're not bouncing much back here. So the versatility is fantastic. Okay, so Jeff passed the baton to the man himself here, Mr. Scott Henley. And I wanted you to take me through this boat. I've never seen it, you know, pretend I've never seen it. Those people at home, let's go through the entire thing and just show us what we got. We went through the engines with Jeff. 
this backrest. What do you have underneath this seating right here? Well, here we have a very large live well. One of the things that when we were fishing, we set up our sea chest, come standard with two pumps. So inadvertently, I'm sure people have been out there fishing before and they've lost a pump and lost their whole day of fishing. Sure. So we add, we have a backup live well pump and, or you can run them both at the same time. And that way you could pressurize your live well. The other thing we do over here in the corner, you can see the diffuser, which I don't think anybody's ever pointed out. But uh -huh. when, instead of having the pumps boil the water and blast it into the baits and have them blow the scales off, we actually have a diffuser in there that actually creates a vortex for the water so the, the fish will swim in one direction and it, and it calms the water and the turbulence down. That's Very a big nice. deal for the fish to, to keep them the longevity. Obviously, we've got a nice seal here, the optional clear lens so you can see what your baits are doing. We have done some in the past where we've actually put uh, windows on the front of the, of the live well. That um, fancy aquarium thing, so. Yep. Under here, we've got a really nice sink. We have access to hook up or a uh, fresher saltwater wash down here on a hose. This is where we'll mount if you have a uh, onboard freshwater flushing system for the engines. We usually mount it in there, which is you see it. That'll you, flush all four engines? Correct. It runs through like a, uh, a, a timed zone. So you plug it in, you can program it for so many minutes, one and then it'll automatically switch after so many minutes of flushing to each one so you're not having to change your hose all the time. Yeah, that's real nice. I mean, obviously the pressure of a hose likely isn't enough to get all quad outboards at the same time, so it just breaks them up. And it's really nice to be able to get to it here where you don't have to climb over onto the transom and pull that little apparatus off the engine, which is always difficult to, you need, you, need, you know, usually lead pliers or a Leatherman to be able to even get that piece off the Mercury outboard, get the thing on. So well, it's making very, life easy and yep. boating easy Super is huge. convenient, super convenient. And while you're doing the other things on your boat, you can let the little uh, box do the thinking for you and, and, and circulate the engines. They've done them where some, I've seen where some of them just split them up and it just doesn't get enough water through them. But this sure. individually allows us the primed or the program time on how much you want to flush it. This little area under here, on certain models, if we have triple engine boat, we'll put a manifold in here and some filters. When we do a quad engine boat, we have the fuel filters and manifolds over underneath the port side. Here we actually have little trays we can put in here and, and make the storage for some more polyplaner trays and, and more tackle storage. It also allows access, which is really critical for me as a somebody running boats and growing up on boats and working on them. Uh, accessibility, that's one of the features that the Bahama has is the accessibility everything. It was uh, made it easy so we could pull these screws off and you can get to the top of the fuel tank, you can get to your trim tabs, you could access the bilge area and uh, you don't have to be a contortionist to get into everything. <laughs> right. Same thing we did, we try to, one of our big thing is keep it nice and clean. We try to have all our fasteners, whether it's the hinges or our hose guides or our rod holders. Some places where you'll have a sea of fastener, just the way that the product that we use may have been designed or the accessibility not to be able to get to the back, the stud where we can put a nut on it. Right. So we've had all this hardware manufactured that has, you know, most manufacturers, you'll have a screw here. And those screw heads deck. exposed, yeah, that's beautiful. Or they'll use a double jointed hinge here. And what that does for them is it allows us the hatch to lay in place, put it here and it actually self levels. Use a single pin hinge. It has to be mounted correctly. It has to be proportionate. It has to articulate properly, but it makes it rigid. So when you stand on it, there's no, there's no yeah. hatch chatter. There's no deflection, nothing moves. And that's the other thing we do with our hatches. They're very rigid. They're finished on both sides. One of the big features that I think we overlook a lot of the times is true dry storage below deck. Running boats and used to be, we'd go to the islands all the time. And if we wanted something really, really dry, all our gear and our bags, our duffel bags, we'd have to put them in black garbage bags. Mm -hmm. And now we said, you know, one of our biggest complaints was wet bilges after your run. So we made a dual seal where you have a landing right here this flat landing, and then it, it coincides with the, the rubber, the light, yeah. soft neoprene gasket. And then we have a hard rubber O-ring gasket here, which actually rides underneath this. The hatch allows the, the tolerance to be just right for the gasket. You see, okay, I've seen these on other boats. If you uh, put this by itself and you put all the pressure on it, walking on the stand, and eventually this wants to pooch out and you see it hanging and it yeah. becomes dis the adhesive wears off. So this controls that. So that we have big gutters and drains, so the water has to get up, get through the first gasket, and then make it through the O-ring seal gasket, and we no. dog the hatch down with a true positive lock. So this gives a true watertight, and I can literally say waterproof hatch. Now you say there's like no flex at all to be able to get, I mean, to have a bilge this clean. And Jason, I don't know if you could see it, but I was looking into the, 
to the finish of this hatch and it looks like a it looks like a mirror it looks like the bilge is still going in that direction if you look at it at the right angle it just shows the finish work that they do here it's fantastic but to be able to get this like you said with a single pin hinge this firm gasket and and this to all kind of fit the way that you do must have taken a tremendous amount of work to get that i mean well, it's, it's incredible all, well to, to know what the thickness of the o-ring is to know how much when we tooled the boat how much recess we had to allow this to because it's a big circle so we had to right. put a recess and in it the, doesn't in the flex deck much at all and it's bonded into the deck bolt and then we have the landing so it, it's a true dual sealed because we want to keep stuff nice down below we yeah. also put this nice lexan covers over our bilges so it allows accessibility to generally what would have been wasted space of a basically exposed bilge now you can put buckets your nets your wash buckets your uh, your mops chamois and any other stuff you want to stow down there but you never leave you can still see what's going on in your bilge and if you need to open it to adjust a valve or to open and close a uh, seacock you can do it yeah it's a lot of area well, you guys do a and great job with this the hatches are so large we hand sand the bottom's edges so nothing's going to snag you you can literally get in there if you had to to work on anything and it makes it really nice and easy and bless you, you can see what's going on one of the other cool things is all of our studded hardware see this screw this head of a screw is actually a nut and it makes it really nice because you're not just having a raw stud showing with a nut on the back side of it but it's actually a nice smooth yeah. uh that's nut. true that actually i didn't like even notice that finish in there yeah and then obviously you've seen the sea keeper our sea keeper our area here is really nice easy to access the builds are all finished off so you can easily to maintain keep clean and easy to service oh and it's actually separated from the bilge so even if you were to get a little bit of water here it's likely not going to ever make it back to your sea keeper which is in, uh, very important especially when it comes to uh salt water talking to yeah. our friends at sea keeper and tri-c stabilizers they you know they keep telling us how how important it is to keep the salt water off because obviously it you know eats it alive and the longevity of the product is affected well, and, and the, the, having a true watertight hatch keeps that water off that you know it's an expensive piece of equipment yeah for sure i like what you guys did here also you added the dual row seating on the gt you have that bit of an angle on the traditional 41 as well which allows you to open this hatch a little bit more so it's cool that you you know were able to keep this thing here extend that second row still keep this hatch this is basically the same size as the traditional deck catch you have on the other model correct and then add this you know rear facing mezzanine seat with cooler underneath the other thing that you know we try to take in consideration is because we we have optional refrigeration and mm. one of the things is you got to let your that has to breathe so okay. we have if you've noticed underneath there we have those plexi vents that are custom made and we mm -hmm. have pancake fans in there to keep actually drawing cool nice air through there to get, take the heat away from the refrigeration units that's okay. important and uh, it, it keeps a nice thing breathing so it doesn't mold and mildew as well. So this so, is it. This is one of the bigger additions, I guess, when it comes to the GT compared to the original 41, the dual row seating. Take us through this. Many, many people asked us, said, do you, we do dual row seating? At the time, we were like, you know, we did all the measurements and it just seemed like, you know, I'm, I'm a hardcore fishing guy where I really like to fish and I cockpit space is really important to me. I was kind of fighting the whole idea for, and I've done that too, where I've just, I get, I mold school and I get stubborn. <laughs> and uh, I just like what I like. And then finally, I just get enough pressure and request to do it, and it just makes sense. So we just sit down and we, we design the space. We actually moved the console forward a little bit, made room for it. And then we obviously, we use our friends at Release, man, they, they do a great job. And they're just wonderful to work with. And just trying to make it where it's, uh, you know, the, the demand or the evolution of center consoles from just being center console hardcore fishing boats become more, more pleasurable and it becomes a a multi-purpose, family-oriented, plus fishing, you know? So sure. we try to make it in, uh, if you wanted one of our originals, you, we, we're still making that, but this is something It's new. a legend it, right there, gotta keep that, of course. Yeah, we that's that, that makes it nice. Like I said, as, as boating has evolved, you know, center consoles have become more and more popular. People have come down from their sport fish to a big center console. You know, the cruising demographic isn't exactly on a Sea Ray, you know, cabin boat. They're, they're on something like this, you know? So but to be able to appeal to, to more of the demographic, I think is an incredibly smart thing to do. And again, now you offer both options. And, and this thing, what did you guys do to keep that cockpit space? Because from what I understand, you, you, you guys moved 
the console up a little bit because there's almost the same amount of space back there. There's nothing that'll stop you from fishing a hardcore tournament or doing anything that you want or you would do on the original boat with this dual roll boat. Correct. From what I we can see. We did move the console forward and that, you know, obviously it does a lot of things to the CG, et cetera. So with that move forward with the seats in the back, our CG is maybe only moved maybe an inch or two. So yeah. it, right before it was just like our original, and that was the main thing. Over the years of trials and tribulations of building boats and learning it, and every time you do one, you think, well, it, at the time you're doing it, like this is gonna be perfect, we love it, it's gonna mm -hmm. be great. Then you use it, and then you get, and you get your customers and friends use it, you go, okay, you know what? This was great, but next time, or it would have been nice if. So we take all that information and we digest it and we try to figure out what would be uniform and across the board to make it the most popular. And that's kind of what we try to incorporate into, into this product. We always have. We make simplicity, easy access, our fit and finish, the balance of the boat, the ride. It performs like a sports car. Mm -hmm. it, it, it looks big and intimidating, but it has no irregular characteristics. You don't need to be a rocket science to uh, operate it. It's just, you push the throttles and you go. And then with the evolution of the new four strokes and the more power and the steering systems and the propeller technology, I mean, Mercury's done a great job. The controls, the fly-by-wire stuff, electronics, everything is just made it so much more pleasurable and easy to, to operate for people that they look at some of this stuff and they think, oh my God, you have to be a rocket scientist to <laughs> work it, but it's really, yeah, it's getting easier, easier and easier. Yeah. As, uh, as as more complex it looks, it seems like the easier it gets for the end user. You know, someone that doesn't have a ton of boating experience can probably jump on this thing with no problem. Sure. After a couple hours with you guys, can run this thing with their family with no issue at all. I and be able to run and, you know, use all their, their stuff with, you know, the more you tinker with it, the more you're going to learn about it. I'm still learning my electronics, and I've had the same Simrads for a couple of, on a couple of boats now. It's still, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's 50% of the stuff I haven't even learned how to use yet. And so you're always learning. There's stuff that's so, ta so you, and you may never. You use you yeah. your basic stuff, your navigation, your fathometer, yeah. your radar, your basic stuff. And then if you really want to get carried away, you could program your waypoints and set it all sure. up. And it'll take you to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. It's pretty nice. It's yeah, map out your, your trajectory and go. Yep. I also see this hard top. This is something different. I saw there was a sunshade aft over there that you can open up and pro you know, provide a little more shade to your friends or family if they're hanging out back there, which is nice. We're in the sun a lot. When I'm out on the boat with my family, I, I, I run to the shade personally. We have these hoods for that reason. So being able to have that is a nice detail. It looks like a oversized hard top, quite a bit bigger than what you had on the other one, obviously with the second row to consider. And then this is actually a cool little little detail you guys did, obviously to accommodate the sure shade, I imagine. That's correct, and access to some things. And the other thing, we, we dropped in a little shower, so when I get diving and spearfishing and whatnot we're doing, it's just nice to cool off and to just rinse off. When you're drying and you've been diving all day and you feel that when your skin starts to dry, you feel yeah. that salt on it, and it's just nice to stand. Instead of grabbing a hose, you can just actually stand under. Yeah, which Jason so said he was gonna demonstrate that even, in his Speedo here in a couple of minutes, but uh, not, I've been, I'm, I'm gonna leave before he does that. <laughs> no, I've, I've never, uh, this, no, this is our prototype, it's hole number one that we've done yeah. as far as this model. We're pretty pleased with the way it came out. No, you guys did a, a great job. Let's, let's continue forward, let's keep looking. So we have a lot of requests for, you know, a bigger dash, we put bigger machines in. And obviously the luxuriousness of the teak, the more ergonomic feel of the uh, the layout itself. This is an optional raised platform on this particular boat. The way this foot rests and the way everything is laid out was to make it as easy, easy and ergonomic and enjoyable and get plenty of visibility so it works nice. Yeah, nice clean enclosure here, obviously, and blocking the wind and sitting in that second row, it's just as nice as blocking a good amount of the, the wind even on the second row. Well, it's so. something to said about a windshield yeah you know we're all used to the eyes and glass which you always either had to unzip and roll up or it was always distorted scratched easy the invention of easy 2 cy and that uh that acrylic has made a big improvement on clarity and it's hard to beat a real piece of glass for a yeah. windshield yeah and you were able to mount it on top of the console didn't have to go and you know do the side mount with the aluminum piping which you know impedes on on the space you have to get around the console so it's a nice clean finish and again it's like a car you know you're gonna put a windshield on a car if you take a, you know, if you were to take a wave over the side, this is a lot more durable. And it's just, again, a pretty finish how you guys laid the whole thing out, looking at the boat from the exterior. You know, it's just really well done. Yeah, and we all, well, another thing that people wanted was, you know, a wider, a wider yeah. way to accommodate the Because before space. you had that little lockable yep. storage space. Which was nice for the hardcore guys that are out there in heavy stuff when you could slide it up. 
and then you could it, all their switches and they were tucked in behind it. This is kind of what people wanted, and yeah. and, and these are what twenty out there and heavy, you know, twenty twos. They're big screens. Uh, yeah, I believe these are the twenty twos. Oh, it's nice to be able to have that there again, flush mounted. It just looks super clean. All you have are your your MFDs and the switch panel. That's it. Have zip wakes on this, which is cool. Mm -hmm. We have that on our boat. We've had a really good experience with it. This Fotique or real teak? Fotique. Oh, okay, you got to well, go. It's Fotique. like no, you, you, I could no I mean, maintenance. Yep, and it looks. I mean, it's fabulous. Yeah, you can't you can't tell the difference. No, this kind of resembles that of a sport fish. You have your little you know cubby that you would see on one of these big sporties. So I like the simplicity of it and, and that feel. Less is more, especially nowadays. Before you'd have a thousand gauges on the on the on the dash, and it seems like the more gauges you had, the cooler it was. Now it's like, you know, clean as less is more. And this, you know, the pod again with the steering wheel, the Edson wheel, N nice finish. Again, gives that simple sport fish feel. Well, and I like it. Believe it or not, that's kind of where this all originated from. Oh, really? The companies where I grew up, running boats and, and restoring old boats when I was young. When I started to get into the center console world for my personal use, I would take an old derelict boat and I would restore it. And um, and basically, I just took what I, I was charter fishing and running big sport fish boats, and I would take what I learned and while I was working on the big sport fish boats and how they're laid out and wired, and and uh, I just took that information, and just put it into a smaller boat package back when there, you know, a 25 make was a big boat back. Yeah, then. yeah. And then we evolved with some 31, 34s, and just keep evolving and making it nicer and just making it easier on the whoever the ownership of the boat, whether you crew or or or, or the owner, you can get in there it, and everything is simplified. You don't need to have a manual mm -hmm. to learn it. I mean, every, everything's labeled. Everything's tells you what to do. It's pretty simple. Yeah, nice and organized. It's always a way to do it. Let's work our way into that famous cabin space. So one of the things like. we do is again getting back to keeping everything nice and dry. We had. The other, some manu manufacturers will just cut a hole in the side of the console. They'll have a prefab door. They'll screw it around with some extrude aluminum. They'll have a, a little half inch plexiglass door. The locking mechanism is just two screw holes and the locking mechanism is basically mounted on the inside. One of my big things is I never wanted any water to get down in here. So we have this really nice big threshold. So any water that's on the deck can't run in and go down in it. We have the 360 degree seal around the door. Again, we have blind fasteners, so this is actually ahead of a nut, but it looks like a screw, so you can't catch yourself when you're ingressing or out leaving. A heavy duty magnet, so the door's not just swinging around all the time. It closes like a safe door or your car door. And serious it has hardware. true mortised in dead bolt lock. I mean, this is, this is true security when you're in the islands. We offer rod storage down inside. We can put as many, we've got different configurations for rod stores. It's over six foot six headroom, so you could actually put most of your standard rods in there. The downstairs below compartment is over 13 feet long, so you can put, if you have some long spin trolls or whatever you want to put down there, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. So the doors are big, heavy duty, rigid door. I mean, again, it, it's, a, it's all a part of the, the uh, robustness that we make this boat, so you can uh, have years and years of uh, enjoyment yeah, it's and, uh, funny. We, we we take quite a bit of time going through the uh, different boats, and we we tend to focus on the yeah. the cabin doors quite a bit. Everybody has their own take at it. You've seen flimsy ones, you've seen heavy duty ones. You guys, you know, when it comes to cleanliness, from the hardware to the finishes, you know, really do a great job. Not because you're standing in front of me, but we say it every single time. If you see one in person, play with the doors. Those those little details are what, for me, you know, speak volumes on the boat in its entirety. Not, you know, if you take that much effort on the door, you know, imagine what the rest of the boat looks like. Looking back in here, I see you have a fridge bar refrigeration system unit there. Is that for the lounger? Cool. Correct. Correct. And those are batteries underneath or? Yep, we've got extra batteries for the uh, the sea keeper and the uh, engines and the other onboard systems. There's uh, we actually have a little ventilation fan there too to make sure we that we can take the heat away yeah. from, the cool, from the compressors, which is important. That it makes it more efficient. And the other thing I was going to notate on the door: some manufacturers just cut a side door where you have to really get down even lower. So this little bit of angle makes that little bit of extra room so you're not banging your head getting in and mm -hmm. out of here so that's kind of one of our trademarks is have this little recess here so you can get a little access make it easier to get more in and out room. versus trying to crawl through a, a tunnel hole yeah you know I, the the mirror is a nice touch uh this cabinet door you know normally it was just the door to access the electronics but now we've uh, incorporated a cabinet where you have a shelf where you never have enough space to yeah. stuff 
We also offer it with extra uh, outlets if you wanted to put your uh, USBs and you can you can plug in your charge things your there. radios or your cell phones or your your flashlights etc. Opening, I mean this is another thing you have huge access. This door also is on a magnetic catch. And it gives you complete access to your rigging, your breaker panels, your uh, electrical systems. Easy to service, easy. Yeah. If you do have an issue, you can trace it real easy. Everything's labeled. We try to make it as clean and simple as possible. We use the best wire. We use the best tin coated copper wire, the best heat shrink terminals, the best, they're epoxy filled, the best breakers. Everything's made it where it's easily accessible. And if you do have an issue, you can get to it and find it. Stereo systems, if you're down inside, that's all of our amplifiers for the stereo equipment. And uh, everybody loves their music, right? For the sandbars. Yeah, sure. Honest, and they listen to their reggae or whatever you choose. That's another feature that we have is our stereo systems are very, I analyze it as a, almost you get, you're standing in a, sur a surround sound system. Of like you're, when you're on this boat, when the music's playing, it's like you're in a, in a boat surround sound. Yeah. It's amazing. All of our speakers are hidden. That's, That's what can. I was going to mention too. <laughs> yeah. And I, I hadn't even seen a speaker out here. So if you look under here, shoot forward here, oh, you yeah. can see the speakers are actually, we make our own speaker mounts and those are 88 JLs. And if you notice, they're all angled in the right location where the music is actually projected down to the deck and then it comes back up and it reverberates off the hard tuck. So the boat, the music stays in the boat and then you'll have unsightly speakers just showing up everywhere and holes everywhere through the boat. Yeah. Clean and simple. And what's nice is if you're in the back of the boat or in the front of the boat or you're walking, all the music is very symmetrical. I was gonna notice, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any speakers besides the hard top. Again, goes back to that clean finish. I mean, JL Audio speakers are nice to look at too, but it's pretty cool to have them kind of hidden around and when they turn the music on, it just kind of surrounds you. Don't know where it's coming from. But <laughs> Bouncing it off wonderful. the deck and back and forth is pretty impressive. And it's so balanced from the highs, the lows, the mid ranges and the bases. It's just a lot of fun because that's where everybody's enjoying their time. So this is kind of a, we, we have the loungers on our other boat, but this one now has built in armrests, which is really cool. It's very large. Obviously you see the uh, refrigeration plate. We've had some fun experimenting with this. We used to make, we put the refrigeration plates on the side, but this turned out to be, we have more square inches of refrigeration plate and we have a nice bar caddy that sits on here and then you can put your, your drinks all the way around it. We can, we actually customize it for the customer if they have special tequilas mm -hmm. or Jack Daniels or any kind of funky bottle. We'll make it actually modify it so that fits their bottle or their brand of wine or whatever they like and enjoy. It also has a little area, dry area for your sandwiches. It also has areas for, if you want to add some ice to it you could add ice to them for you know for you for your big cubes yeah it's your, nice uh you get out there and it seems like you go through ice really quickly it's great to be able to open that thing up have your ice. drinks and have everything chilled without having to worry about ice at all well that's, you know a lot of people they think okay they get their ice get the drinks get the beers whatever and they got the ice you know everybody grabs a handful of that ice and all yeah. the cans are dirty the the, you don't know what, but it, try to keep an area where you have sterilized ice for your cocktails that mm -hmm. you're actually putting in your drink. Yeah. Versus it just grabbing it. Yeah, I it's mean, being everybody's a had fish on their hands. They get in there, grab yeah. ice, put their drink, it just, it gets a little, it's just, it makes, takes that nice that, you know, you got real clean ice. You know, we got an area for lounging. If you want to have lunch or whatever up here, cocktail cruising, we do a lot in the wintertime. You know, a lot of the homes here in South Florida are lit up in the back as much as they are in the front. A lot of people do the uh, cruises and just to see the Christmas lights in all the homes. So everybody has their libations, they're drinking or whatever uh, hors d'oeuvres, they can have it. And then it's not, it's, it's here locally and, and the ladies love this area. They get to chit chat, yeah. the guys are in the back and they're doing what they think. But the other mm -hmm. thing is, you know, the South Florida sun's pretty heavy duty. And we have a huge shade for this one. It has the carbon fiber poles. This one actually has four poles, so it makes it really nice and it actually pulls it tight on the outside so you have a little more coverage. It's easy to stow, but uh, it makes it, it makes your time on the water longer because you're heading to shade. Because there's oh, nothing, for sure. you know, it'll ruin your day, you get a sunburn. And there's some people that just can't take the sun and shade's yeah. important, especially in the Bahamas because it's everybody riding and hiding under that under yeah. the top. Yeah. But when you get where you're going, you're diving, or you're, it's just nice to have as much. We've got people that put shades on both sides, and it, it, it's wonderful to have. Them. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that plenty. Like I said, these these center consoles pretty much have you know three different entertainment areas. Like you mentioned, this is its own area. You can have a group hanging out here over at the helm. You got two rows of seats. People can be hanging out there listening to music. And then aft, you got that bench seat, the rear facing mezzanine seat as well. That's another area. People can just you know you can have 14 people on this boat hanging out, having a good time, and really not 
be in each other's way whatsoever. Sure. And the girls like it up here because they can cruise up here. They can lay out on, they can lay out and sunbathe if they like yeah. plenty long. And that's a huge forward seat. You can lay down here no problem. The other thing we did, we, you know, trying to think about the usability between some uh, people read to a wraparound, which is nice. But when you're fishing, now you, it's nice to have the flush deck all the way to the front. So, mm -hmm. you, or if you're tying up a line, you yeah. know, you, you can- Being able to access the other Yeah, you're standing up, you're not on your knees trying to grab a line or do whatever yeah. if you're trying to fish. It's, so this flush deck all the way to the front makes it nice. There's massive amount of storage under here. It is insulated. This one is going to be uh, refrigerated. So Alan, when the fish boxes are down below deck, they're required, you gotta pump them out. So we moved our fish boxes up above the water line. So when you're rinsing them out, all that blood, the fish scales, everything can go right out the side of the boat without the necessity of a macerator, which mm -hmm. everybody knows that tips of fins of fish get caught up in it, pieces of monofilament, and then you're trying to drain it and clean the boat. Next thing in your day, you're spending taking your pump apart to get it cleaned out so you can pump, oh, yeah. the, pump the the uh, fish blood. Extent. And it goes right out the whole side? And it goes right out the side. You can rinse it off just like you're rinsing out yeah. anything. It's nice it's too when you're trying to, you know, you put soap and water in there and you're using a macerator to get that water out and foam gets in there. It's always like a headache. Definitely being able to have it above the water line and just gravity fed off back the boat. Feeds. You know, you pump a pump and it back feeds and yeah. back fills up and you yeah, yeah. the residue. <laughs> yeah. Then you got the smell and yeah. so it does. So it makes it a lot easier. It makes it more sanitary, easier to clean and no maintenance to deal with a pump. That's really nice. So to below here, below the fish boxes is another storage area. This is massive storage. So one of the reasons we make, we call this the bomb is because we make it so we can travel to the islands. We've got, our little motto is, you know, made in America, built for the islands. Below deck space is critical. True dry storage below, because we get people that rent houses now, which is a big deal for two or three weeks at a time. They'll load all their stores on board, their drinks, all of their provisions and whatnot, their, their clothes dive gear, et cetera. I had one fellow that took 36 dozen eggs to the islands, way down island. Here? It, it was <laughs> down in here and he took, and he had all the growth. He had, you know, 25 people coming to stay with him. Oh my And Lord. he stocked it up and he's a chef, so he had it all. He went all the way down there, to 300 miles down island and uh, had a beautiful home there and he didn't break an egg. That's, an, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Gutsy move to put uh, yeah. that many eggs up on the so bow here. But. We also have a, an area compartment, which is really nice because we have an actual designated area for the bow thruster, the optional bow thruster, if you request. Mm -hmm. We're um, not to seem to doing as many as we were before because of now the uh, joystick. It's kind of taken its place. Forward, we got the windlass, which you can operate from up front and deploy it and or retrieve it. Pop-up deck hardware, again, blind fasters, no, no hardware showing. The, obviously, you can control the anchor the windlass from the, uh, from the helm the helm and uh, mm -hmm. space you know make it easy to walk through a lot of what i find what, what i was concerned a little bit about when we widened the console is uh space you know it's nice to be able to get two people to walk by oh, yeah, a ton of space, fish yeah. to yeah. get by somebody versus some consoles are so close that you can't do it this is so, wider than the traditional no console? it's not it this is the console is yes but since the legs now don't encroach so we, where the legs would normally be right. we kind of went to that area say if i'm fighting to fish you can stick it by me well, they yeah, no get a problem. Calf or whatever versus oh, no, uh, versus <laughs> most, otherwise it's it's a lot more for rubbing cheeks. I don't know, but we'll we can make it happen. When you put that you know aluminum piping off the side, you eat up four inches easy, Correct. maybe five the on either thing, side as well. So and also sides. what we've done is uh, our gunnels are so nice and tall, and everything is smooth. The other thing here is you see this is this is a, a challenge to make this cut all the way around the interior of the of the cap, and to have it all hand blocked so it's smooth, so you don't cut your hand or anything. And so here, we, it's not necessary to have combing. Mm -hmm. So when you fight the fish, you can lay into this and it hits you ab uh, above, above the knee, above yeah. the waist. And you can lay into that just like you're laying on a piece of uh, combing, but you don't need it. And that combing takes up a couple of inches. So yeah. between that and the pipe, that starts encroaching into your walkway. So those are little things where we try to maximize the walkway, yet keep it, keep it nice and clean and simple. You know, we were talking storage. We've got all kinds of little cubby heroes for, for stuff, clothes, but you can stow, there's a lot of storage area for stuff, which you never have enough space, right? Yeah. And then under here, you've got more storage and drawers. And then actually that compartment gives you access to the compressor. You definitely can never have too much storage. It seems like no matter how much storage you have, you always seem to run short. So the more you can squeeze in here and the more square footage you can utilize, uh, the, the better. Area. You know, you can, when, you're, when you design your own boat, when you build one with us, you can convert this. Microfiber holder. Yeah. Well, the boat papers, <laughs> your wallets, you know, uh, your custom forms and stuff and all. 
that's a nice little place for that kind of stuff. And it's easy to get to. We try to make it real ergonomic, easy to see. Like I said, you have that option to, to lay this out any way you like. You can hide your radio, or you can put your head stereo unit up here if you like. We try to keep everything down low. Everything is now operatable through the garment system, your, stereo, your media, your seat keeper. Everything is now piped through your garments now so you can operate everything pretty much right from the one screen. Wow, I mean, you guys killed it with this. I gotta, I gotta say, and sometimes when you try to, you know, switch around the idea of a boat and, and give it, you know, a new look and feel, I, I've seen people make some mistakes. And again, not because you guys are, are here in front of me, but when I first saw it, I was like, dang, they, they did a good job with that. It came out real nice. And again, when you start moving console and stuff, the CG, like you mentioned, and being able to nail it down this boat, you know, it's a Bahama at the end of the day. But a Bahama now built, not just for the strict anglers it's for the family and again there's don't look at this and think hey I, i'm a tournament you know fishing team don't think you're not going to fish this in a tournament again this has every single feature that the other boat has sure you just organize it in a way to add more seating add more of that you know those creature comforts but all the fishability is is there exactly like the other boat is so That's correct you know again the older i get i have two two little girls and this is more, you know, when I used to be the, the straight up bare bones fishing boat guy, this is more up my alley. And I think more and more as, as people get into the center consoles, this is this is the type of boat that reaches the most amount of people. Well, that's why we designed it to help fill that need. Well, thank you guys did a great job. Thank you very much for that walkthrough. I wanna, for those of you still watching, let us know what you guys think. Comment down there, have a discussion, argue if you want. We like watching all that stuff. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. We'll answer them the best we can. If not, we'll direct you to the fine people here at Bahama Boatworks. Thank you guys once again for hanging out with us. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only.